Welcome to Xcoder video. You're watching session number 14 of the MicroHard uh, series, and we're going to be looking at the decoder uh, today and uh, showing an implementation of that. Uh, before we do that, I'd like for us to take a real quick look at the CPU that's coming up next. Uh, the, uh, in our last video, the CPU and the decoder were both uh, given as tasks that are available for us to work on, uh, primarily, I think, for us to, to uh, get a feel for what both of them did together. But the uh, uh, CPU really needs the decoder before it can be implemented. You'll notice in the specification and the design section, they've already uh, indicated or supplied the decoder as one of the parts that will be necessary for the CPU. Uh, I've done something a little bit different this time in that uh, I have uh, decided to go ahead and implement uh, the decoder before the video. And I uh, wanted to make sure that I could uh, uh, get it right and decode it, save some time uh, for my viewers. And so that is what we've done. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at it the normal way, but uh, this should be a shorter video because uh, of the way that I've done it this time. Uh, the decoder actually looks pretty complicated when you look at the specification and the, the, the description of it here. Uh, and it's a little bit difficult sometimes to get a good grasp of uh, what it's describing. Part of that, part of the reason for that is uh, the, the way that this is described, it's, it describes things the way they're going to work once it's placed within the CPU and what the CPU does with it. Uh, and uh, that really doesn't have anything to do with the, the operation of the decoder because the decoder doesn't depend upon the CPU. And once I understood that, I was able to go through the uh, description of the decoder and uh, get a pretty good idea of uh, uh, what, it wanted to, what it wanted to do. Basically, there's one input, a 16-bit bus called N NSTR, and uh, a description of the bus is shown here uh, in the uh, in the uh, specifications. And uh, what you have to do is just go through here and look how everything works and uh, implement it so that it does the things that it says it's supposed to do. Uh, what I did was I took uh, a screenshot of the uh, specifications and uh, converted that into uh, text so that I could bring it over into Notepad. Made it a little bit easier for me to uh, to have my uh, the description of it up when I was working within Designer. Let's go over to Designer and uh, take a look at the. Uh, design that I came up with. Uh, over on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the input of, of the uh, decoder. And at the bottom of uh, the uh, wiring here, the output of the decoder. And it's a fairly simple device. There are three AND gates, a couple of NOT gates, and then four uh, multiplexers. And that's all there is to the decoder. Of course, you've got to put the, you have to wire it up just right so that it does uh, what it's supposed to do, but that's really uh, not all that difficult. The uh, instructions show the, what the uh, various uh, pins represent. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, here in the uh, in the description, we have the 16 bits of the input. 
uh, laid out here with uh, uh, these mnemonics at, for each of the bits. Uh, pins 14 and, well, pin 15 or 16, the, uh, what, what they've labeled here as 16, is uh, a bit that uh, tells us what kind of instruction this is. If that is a 1, then basically what that means is to put the 15 bits from 1 to 15 uh, in the uh, uh, the uh, M register, and we'll see that uh, in the uh, in the CPU once we get to working in that. But the M register is connected. Well, the M register is connected in the uh, in the CPU in such a way that when the load M value goes high, then the 15 bits in this constant on this uh, on this output go into the M register. And uh, the way that is done is you see this, uh, uh, the uh, 15, this pin 15, uh, this is the high order bit from the output of N, N STR. It comes down here and it just sets, it just goes directly into C to M, which stands for constant to the M register. And so that goes high, and the uh, constant has the 15 bit, the rest of the bits in it from the NSTR, and that goes to the M register as a result of that operation. All the other operations are handled by the rest of the circuitry when the, uh, when the, the this pin, pin 15, is low. Pin 16, the way they number it here, but pin 15, the way it's numbered in, in designer. And there are uh, several different types, uh, several different uh, bits of data here. Uh, pins 14 and 15 uh, is uh, a reference to the destination for the operation. Where is the operation's result going to go? And that is represented here in the design of from pin 13 and 14. We bring those out. We split it out into, into four lines, the uh, normal lines and then the negated lines. This is pin 0 and pin 1. So uh, when... 13 and 14 have a value of zero, then all of these AND gates will be blocked and nothing gets through. When they have a value of one, you'll notice here that's the high of the low bit. That's the normal of the low bit. And the negation of the, of the high bit that turns this one on and it passes through as a one. Uh, this one does the same thing for a value of two. If, uh, if this has a value of two, then this one is turned on and that passes the value of one. And then if, if this one is, uh, uh, does the same thing for a value of three, and so if this is on and this is on, then this will pass a 1 to the load D. And that's how we turn on load A, load M, and load D with the AND gates. There's one other case when load M turns on, and that's when uh, pin 15 goes high because it's set over here as a 1, comes into here, and when pin 15 is high, that is the value that passes through to the load M uh, output. Uh, op 1 just gets the value that's on pin 12. Op 2 gets the value that's on pins 10 and, uh, and 11. And then jump Z is 
if the uh, pen 15 or yeah, pen 15 is uh, pen 15 is zero, if pen 15 is zero and pen five is a one, then jump Z will be a one. In this case, you call that's the default value that comes through. Each of these allow the default value from these gates or from the jump Z line uh, when pin uh, 15 is in a low, low state. And that is, that describes the entire logic of uh, the, the decoder. And, uh, it's uh, it's just about as simple as that. Let's go and take a look at the wiring in uh, MicroHard. And uh, we'll just go over here and take a look at the uh, value that we, uh, we uh, the, take a look at the, the wiring that's set up here. Uh, the outputs that were given to us in uh uh, by microhard are the inputs in string, which is a 16-bit bus. Then uh, that's, that's, that's in, I think that stands for instruction instead of in string. Then uh, C to M, that's constant to the M register. This is load A, load D, and load M. Op 1 is a 1-bit value. Op2 is a 2-bit value. The opcode 4 is a 4-bit value. Jump if Z is 1-bit, then the constant is a 15-bit value. The parts that were needed, just a few of them. We have two knots, uh, three AND gates, and four MUXs, four uh, multiplexers. The wiring, I set it up here to uh, just starting off with... Uh, the input wires, uh, I ran the wires to the N1 one gate, and I ran the wires for the N2 gate, and I ran the wires for the N3 gate, just based upon uh, the logic that's described in the specification and how we implemented it within uh, the uh, digital tool. And then the MUX MUX select wiring that uses the uh, NSTR 16 to uh, zero out to a zero output when NSTR 16 is equal to one. So uh, we force everything to, well, we force these two uh, gates to zero, uh, the MUX 1, MUX 3. And uh, MUX4 uh, is a little bit different now. I'm sorry, MUX2 gets a 1, and the MUX1 and MUX3 get a 0. Then we have the output here. Uh, we send the in string uh, 16. All, uh, we pin, let's see, this is the uh, high order bit from the input. We just send it direct to C to M. Then we take the output from the AND1 gate, send it to MUX1 N1, which is the default value. Whenever the select is zero, then that is the value that goes out the MUX1. Uh, for the selectable value, that goes into MUX1.IN2, and we set that to zero. And then we take the output for MUX1 and send it to load A. Do something similar for load M and for load D. Then we take the one bit from in, in STR13 to OP1. We take two bits from in STR11 and 12 and send that to OP2. We take the four bits of N, I, N, S, T, R, <clears throat> 7 through a, uh, 10 to the opcode output. And uh, those are just di directly from the input to the op 
output. There's nothing, there's no uh, manipulation of those uh, bits. Then the uh, sixth wire in NSTR uh, goes into MUX4.ini and zero goes to N2 for the selectable output. And then the output from MUX4 goes to jump FZ. And then finally, in string uh, 1 to 15, the 15 low order bits, everything except for the very highest bit of that input bus goes to constant. And if we hit uh, control enter, we get uh, the verification that our design passed. I don't know how many uh, uh, tests it ran here, but it is a lot because <laughs> I've, at one point I had 512 uh, errors on here because of uh, I had mixed up uh, load M and load D and had them had them swapped, and so had a lot of errors as a result of that. But uh, in this case, now we've got we got it passed and. Uh, everything worked just fine. Our next video is going to look at the CPU that's a little bit more complicated than the uh, decoder, but uh, thanks to what the decoder does and the help that it provides CPU, it's not that complicated and uh, we should be able to get through it pretty easily. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll look for you again later.